Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are subtracting fractions when we have variables. Similar to the question you see there in orange. This is going to take a lot, so let's get into it. First off, what we're going to look at today, we are going to be talking about grouping symbols and what we do with uh, when we're subtracting an entire group inside of a grouping symbol. And we are going to be doing that subtracting and working with like terms. Let's do this. First off, let's talk about grouping symbols. We are going to be working with fractions today, so I want to do most of my examples using fractions. So let's start off with these grouping symbol questions. When we're taking four-fifths minus the quantity of one-fifth plus two-fifths, what we need to do is apply that negative sign to all terms. So we'll write down four fifths and then we apply that negative to the first term. In other words, it's, it's like multiplying negative times that or negative one times that, which will give you negative one fifth. Then we multiply that negative times the two fifths and that gives us negative two fifths. In other words, the opposite of two fifths. It just changes the symbol. If it's positive, it turns it into a negative. And then we subtract like normal. With fractions like this, when you are adding or subtracting, if you have a common denominator, the denominator is the same number, you just take the numerators and subtract them. 4 minus 1 and is 3, and 3 minus 2 equals 1. The denominator remains the same, and you just subtract the numerators, just like that. That uh, would be our final answer for this question. The second example is a little bit different. We'll follow basically the same steps. So we're going to write down 5 sevenths, and then we are going to take that negative and apply it or multiply it to everything inside of the parentheses. Negative 4 sevenths, and then negative times negative 5 sevenths. Because there's a double negative there. A negative times a negative will give us a positive. So we end up with 5 sevenths minus 4 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. 5 minus 4 is 1 and 1 plus 5 equals 6. So we end up with 6 sevenths. Again we add or subtract the numerators, the denominators remain the same. So that's what I wanted to focus on when it comes to grouping symbols. When you've got that negative outside the grouping symbols, you have to apply it to everything inside of the grouping symbols because you are subtracting that entire quantity. All right, now let's do some practice with these ones. They're a little bit more complicated, and I'm sure maybe if you take a minute to look at it, you've picked up on why. They do not have the same denominator. It's the same types of questions as what we did before, where we write down the 9 tenths, but in this case, as we are applying that negative to each term inside the parentheses, I'm also going to convert that fraction so that it has a common denominator. If you remember how to do that, great. If you're not sure how to make two fractions have the same denominator, then what you need to do is go and do a quick review lesson on that because I'm not going over it inside this lesson. I'm assuming you know how to make a fraction have a common denominator. So two-fifths will become four-tenths. Again, it is a negative because we're applying that negative, negative times two-fifths. Now what we're going to do is move on to our next one because we do negative times three-tenths and that will give us negative three-tenths. Now I'm going to subtract the numerators, leave the denominators the way they are. So nine minus four is five, five minus three is two, two-tenths. Now, I'm also going to say one more thing. Whenever I do fraction questions, I want to simplify fractions into lowest terms. So I'm going to simplify two-tenths to being one-fifth. Again, if you're not really comfortable with simplifying fractions, you might want to go back and do a quick review lesson because I'm not going to cover how to do that in this lesson. I'm just going to simplify all of our fractions at the end. All right. Let's move on to this one. What you might want to do now is pause the video, try and solve this one. Make sure you have common denominators for, the, um, for all fractions. Make sure you subtract everything inside, that, inside the parentheses and make sure that your final answer is in simplest form. Try it out. All right, lot to remember here. 
5 twelfths is going to remain the same because all three fractions can get a denominator of 12. I'm going to make that a negative 3 fourths, but I'm also going to convert that into a fraction with a denominator of 12. I multiply both the top and bottom times 3. Then I do that um, I'm going to take the opposite of negative two-thirds which will give me positive two-thirds and I'm going to make that into eight-twelfths which is equivalent to two-thirds because I am changing it to have a common denominator of 12. Now we go ahead and leave the denominator of 12 the same and then we will subtract. Five minus nine it gives me negative four and negative four plus eight gives me positive four twelfths. I simplify that fraction down to one-third. I will end up with an answer of positive one-third. Notice with this question we also had negatives. We did five minus nine which gave us negative four. You might see positives, negatives, simplifying fractions, getting common denominators. There's a lot going on in here. All right, let's move on to the review on like terms. I'm not using fractions in this for my first example, just to show the basics and make sure that we're all on the same page here. So with like terms, we want to make sure that the frac or that the variable is the same. So I have 3x and negative x. I also have 2y and negative 6y. And I have two numbers, 4 and negative 7. Those are like terms, terms that are consistent with variable or the constant numbers. What we can do when solving this is we could put these numbers together. You can move them around as long as you move them with their sign. So I would have negative 3 or 3x three and negative x, 2y and negative 6y, 4 and negative 7. I can move them around like that. You don't have to do that but sometimes it makes it easier to join to do the addition or in this case subtraction of these numbers. All right, and then we join together like terms. So 3x minus x will give us 2x, 2y minus 6y gives us negative 4y, and 4 minus 7 equals negative 3. We don't write it this spread out, but I wanted to write it that way just to be clear. We actually write it like this, and that's our final answer. We cannot join together 2x, negative 4y, and 3. They are different. They are unlike terms. So I want to remember that when we go into the next types of exercises we're doing. And we are going to make it more complicated because we're working with fractions, but the way it works is exactly the same way. Let's take a look. Wow, this may look a little bit complicated and that's okay. What I'm going to do is do exactly the same steps I did in the first two questions. I'm going to write down 9 tenths x that x goes with that fraction. That's 9 tenths of x, 9 tenths of whatever x is. I'm going to apply that negative or multiply that negative times each term inside the parentheses. That becomes negative 2 fifths and negative 3 tenths x. Notice I did not change the 2 fifths this time. I don't have to. 2 fifths can remain the same because I don't need to join that with any other terms. There's no like terms to, to two-fifths. Two-fifths is a number that will stay as a constant on the end of this. However, I will need to join the nine-tenths x and three-tenths x because they both have a, a, den, or a variable of x. Those are the like terms. So I will join them together. Nine minus three is six. So I end up with six-tenths x minus two-fifths, and I can simplify this down as you see here. Six-tenths does simplify to three-fifths, so that's going to be my final answer. Three-fifths x minus two-fifths. Even though there's common denominators there at the end, we do not join those terms together. That three-fifths is how many x's there are. The two-fifths is just a constant. It's a number, so we don't touch that. That is our final answer. All right, I want you to try this on the second question there. Go ahead and try that, pause the video, try and solve that, and then I'm going to go through it step by step. Three, two, one, go! Hey, welcome back. Let's do this. 5 twelfths x. 
I'm going to multiply that negative times 3 quarters. Because these are my two terms that have x as the variable, I will convert this to having a common denominator of 12. I then as well do negative times negative 2 thirds, which gives me positive 2 thirds. There we go. That one I do not need to change the denominator because it is a constant. It's just a number at the end. It does not have an x in it, so I don't have to join it together with anything else. Now I'm going to do some subtraction. 5 twelfths minus 9 twelfths leaves me negative 4 twelfths x minus 2 thirds. I'm going to simplify the first term, negative 4 twelfths, will simplify it down to being negative 1 third x, and then I have negative 2 thirds on the end. Again, that's my final answer in simplest form. I can't join together anything else here. This is it. All right, now let's look at subtracting. This is the standard that we are looking at for seventh grade math. This standard is this type of question. I just did all that extra stuff to kind of make sure we had the tools that we needed to solve this type of question. But this is the type that you will be getting. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. Let's do it. First off, 4 sevenths x plus 5 ninths. That gets written down just the way it is. You don't have to do anything to it, just like that first term we were writing down in the previous questions. Now this negative, we do have to multiply times each term inside the parentheses. So it's going to become negative 2 sevenths x and positive 2 ninths. Notice with this question I've given us nice common denominators. It's our first question. We're easing into it. So you're going to have those common denominators that we join together. We have common denominators for our x values and common denominators for our constant or our numbers. So let's go ahead and join together 4 sevenths x and negative 2 sevenths x. Those two terms will give us 2 sevenths x and 5 ninths plus 2 ninths gives us 7 ninths. I also made this question have no simplifying at the end. That is our final answer. So this one here was a nice one to ease us into this type of question. We still had to look, worry about that negative being applied to every term inside the parentheses, and we did have to do some addition of fractions, joining just together the like terms, but there was no simplifying at the end and no um, changing to a common denominator. So this was a good first type of question. The next one's going to be a little bit harder, and I want you to try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause that recording and try it, and then I'll walk through the solution afterwards. Go. You didn't do it, did you? Come on, seriously, pause it, try it out. Get out a piece of paper and a pencil. All right, now let's take a look at it. I'm going to write down the first, the entire first um, term there, or well, two terms, the, the 3 quarters x and the 5 sixths, those two terms. Then I'm going to do that multiplication, negative times 1 8 x will give me negative 1 8 x. I multiply again, negative times 2 thirds will give me negative 2 thirds. I guess I like the number 2 thirds. I'm using it a lot. It's an easy one to work with. All right, now I have this situation where I know I need to convert some fractions to having common denominators. I want the x's to have common denominators, and I want the numbers to have common denominators. They do not need to be common between each other. So I'll show you what I did. I'm going to first off identify which ones need to be common and then I will convert 3 quarters into 6 eighths. There it is. Now my x's both have a denominator of 8. I'm going to convert 2 thirds into 4 sixths so that both of my numbers, my constants here, have a denominator of 6 and that way I can join them together. Now I'm going to simply add or subtract. I'll take 6 eighths minus 1 eighth, which will give me 5 eighths, and then 5 sixths minus 4 sixths leave me with 1 sixth. This is my final simplified answer. I can't simplify this any further, so that one is in its simplest form. So that one's kind of nice. We did have to um, 
give ourselves common denominators, but that's the type of question that we'll need to do. All right. That is all the practice questions that we are going to do today. A couple of things to remember. One, apply that negative to all terms inside the grouping symbols. Number two, only join like terms. And number three, remember all the rules for subtracting fractions. There's a bunch of them. Make sure that you remember all of them and you will be in good shape. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.